Hey guys, Humble Mechanic here. What is going on in here? What are you doing? <laughs> What's up everybody? Today I'm here with Bogey from Bogey's Garage, All Girls Garage, and a whole million other things. You guys probably know her as well. BMW technician, technician in general, or mechanic, whatever you prefer. Shop owner, all around rad chick, good friend of mine, proud to call her friend. Today we're going to talk about dealing with comebacks. Ugh, mm. like when I say that, I would just get this like weird knot in right? my stomach. And what yeah. we're talking about mostly is how do you, as a technician, deal with a comeback? And there's all different sides of this, and we're gonna try and keep it short and concise, which is really hard for both of us, as you guys know, like I ramble all the time. So this is comebacks, that is, is a part of being a technician. Yes. It's gonna happen. Also, don't care what technician you are. We all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Now, the comeback may be our fault. Yeah. It may be not. To me, dealing with it, though, is kind of the same. Yes, I agree. And I think it starts with, A, knowing that it is going to happen and yep. it's normal and it doesn't make you an awful tech or an awful person or a complete failure at life or anything like that. It's going to happen. How you react to it is what determines everything right? right so i think the biggest thing is raising your hand and acknowledging when you've made a mistake yep i have have dealt with many comebacks both personally professionally you know as it was my fault or it happened to me whether it was my fault or not uh and i've also dealt with a lot of as a shop foreman a lot of technician comebacks for other people maybe they were off that day or whatever and we as technicians or humans like when someone says hey this car's back because you know, you did something wrong, and I think advisors typically do a terrible job at softening that blow a little bit because it's an ego blow, right? Yeah, we've you got did... egos about our work for sure. It's insane, and I mean, I'm like, <laughs> I'm way up there, so so I speak as when I say it's insane, it's it's me that feels that way. Um, so I think advisors typically don't do a great job of, of softening that blow a little bit, or what really happens more is being accurate. It's comes from customer says, "I was just here, now I have this problem." Service advisor says they were just here. Now it has this problem. You have to fix it. Uh, and and like I took that super personally, right? Yeah. Because it was never my goal to do it wrong. Um, but I think you hit it. The the biggest thing, whether it was your fault or not, doesn't really matter. Right. I don't think anyway. It's your fault because the car's back in your bay, and the customer thinks it's your fault. There's no point to saying, well, it's not my fault, right? There's no point in saying, no, customer, you're an idiot. You did this, <laughs> right? Even if it is. So I've had many times where, I mean, you know, German cars have like a million splash shields underneath. <laughs> car comes in, do an oil change, send it out the door. Car comes back the next day. Ever since you did my oil change, the belly pan fell off. That's a reasonable thing. And mm -hmm. I have seen, yep. I've put belly pans on incorrectly in my career, right? Yeah. Um, I've seen it be that. I just screwed it up. Right. Or maybe the customer drove too close over a parking thing right after leaving your shop and they caused the damage. Yep. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Right. Because they're upset. Right. And I think the way, so let's use that as, as how we would handle this situation. Car comes in. Hey, Bogey, ever since you worked on my car, my belly pan fell off yesterday. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. That is so frustrating. Let's get in and take a look and see what happened. Okay. So we saw what just happened there. This is fun role play, right? Uh, we saw what just happened there. No blame. No nothing. I'm sorry that it happened. Let's take a look. Let's figure out what it actually is. This could have went different ways. No, I know I put that belly pan back on right. You're an idiot. Or, customer flip side, you screwed my car up, right. it's your fault. Well, we, we don't know. Maybe. Yeah. And even when the customer says, you screwed up, it's your fault, you can deflect that yeah. by saying, I'm so sorry you had that experience. Let's get it in the shop and find out what happened. And then if it is their fault, you can see the yellow paint from the parking thing that they drove this up exactly too far. Right? Then you get to bring the customer right. out and say, I wanted to show you something. So yeah. not pointing fingers here at all. The reality is, is it's, a cr it's a crappy design and they come apart way too easily and it hangs down too low. And so it drives everybody crazy. But look at what happened. Yeah. And when they can see it with their own eyes, then it kind of deflects that anger. But if you come at them with, no, I didn't. Right. That raises everybody's That just raises tension, their right? anger. The, the stress level. So let's also remember too, like 
a lot of times cars have multiple drivers, <laughs> right? So we have two cars, one's a five, one's a six speed, three cars, one's a five speed, one's a six speed, and one's an automatic. Seven speed? Yeah, <laughs> it's a five speed too. Um, my wife doesn't drive a manual transmission, but I drive all the cars. So it could easily be that she took the car in for an oil change. I drove it later that day. I hit something and I didn't say anything because why would I tell my wife I hit something if I don't have to, right, boys? Like, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> she gets in it the next day and all she knows is there's something dragging on the ground and I just had the oil change done. So it may not be, or you have a teenage driver or something else. So it yeah. may not be that the person bringing you the car did the damage. Mm -hmm. It could be someone else in the family. And that's happened yeah. a lot. I'd say 90%, if not more, of the problems or comebacks or just issues that we have between customers and shops is communication breakdown. And it's either communication breakdown between the customer and the service advisor, the service advisor and the technician, or the two customers, if it's yep. a husband and wife, or a wife and wife, or a husband yeah, and husband, whatever. let's be equal opportunity yep. here. Um, the people involved in, in the car right. ownership, right? So it's communication breakdown, and it happens all the time. And so if we take off the defensiveness and then just try to get down to the communication aspect of it and resolve that, yep. you're going to save yourself a whole lot of headaches. I had, and this this came directly from my boss, so Rusty, if you're watching this, this is I'm going to give you all the credit for it. Um, there was a, a, a saying, or kind of, it wasn't even really a saying because it was so much more than that. It was sort of a mindset and and like the soul of how we behaved, and that was, Always be the hero for the customer because what's the alternative, right? They're coming to you because they have a problem. This problem may be your fault. <laughs> it may not be. We don't know that until we really dive in. But why would you want to be anything but the hero for them? Yeah. Because the alternative is like you're the villain right. for them. So don't be the villain. It's easy. Hey, I'm sorry this happened. This really sucks. Uh, let me pull it back in the shop. Take, Give me like 20 minutes. Give them a time because that mm -hmm. eases tension too. Give me like 25 minutes. Let me take a look at it. We pull it in, we go, oh, I totally put that belly pan. Or you you go to your roll cart and go, oh, there's the belly pan screws. This is why it's not on there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the customer and say, hey, you know what, Mrs. Jones, I looked at it. I didn't put your belly pan on wrong. Right. I I did it wrong. I, it's I never happened up, to me but before. But I'm going to fix it. Give me like another half hour. If you got the time, I'll take care of it. We'll run your car through the car wash, right? You kind of have to over... Uh, oversell the yeah, next part. You, you screwed up. And guys, it, it's important to understand that it's gonna happen. You're gonna screw something up. And again, we talked about communication. Maybe it is because the advisor told you that the wrong about the wrong noise, or the customer didn't know. We, I mean, how many times has the customer brought a car and there's something wrong with my car? I don't know what it is. Or you told your service advisor this belly pan is not gonna stay on because it's broken. I secured it as best I could. Yeah. And then service advisor doesn't tell the customer. So that happens too. All the time. But at the end of the day, A, thank the customer. They don't have to come back to you. They could just go off pissed and tell everybody about how awful you are as a technician or how awful your shop is. So thank them for the opportunity to make it right. And then I think most people, if you're real with them and you own up to your mistake, even if you really egregiously screwed something up, yep. if you own up to it and you're calm and you're kind and you're willing to do something to make it right, they're going to forgive you. Yep. Like They're willing to see your humanity if you're willing to say, I don't know how this happened. I'm going to be yep. totally honest. I messed up. It is a huge inconvenience for you. I am so sorry that this happened, but I'm going to make it right. Yep. I think, I think that's the key. And, you know, this can happen from a, a, a million different ways. And sometimes we might need to prepare the customer for this isn't the only thing that's going to be wrong with your car. Mm -hmm. How many times did I deal with a brand new car, weird problem, dealing with the manufacturer? They say, hey, let's try this part first. We install the part and we have a blunt conversation, right? This could easily be summed up with just communicate properly with people and it will be fine. Right? It may suck for a minute, but it'll eventually be fine. We, yes. But maybe we prep them. Hey, manufacturer said we're going to put this part on. I'm a little shaky on it. Don't know if it's going to fix it or not. But, but here's, <laughs> here's our next step in repair. And, and I think, again, when you just be honest and upfront, and whether that's you laying on the sword because you screwed it up, right. laying on the sword because you didn't, but... Like, what's the other choice? Again, hero or villain, uh, just do what you got to do to make it right. There's no use arguing with them. Even if they're wrong, even if they're screaming at you, you're never going to win that kind of argument or anything with a customer. So I know this is sort of facing technicians, but I think we as customers can kind of learn from that too. Like, if someone screws something up, like your car, and everybody's okay, but perhaps a bit inconvenienced, 
you're always going to win more uh, customers with honey versus <laughs> sugar or honey versus vinegar, right? More flies with honey versus vinegar. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> He'd get there eventually. Yeah, it's, we'll go the long way around. Understand that they are also human, just like you probably. Uh, and they can also make mistakes just like we all do. And it it is a hurtful thing as a technician when I made a mistake that was legit my fault. Uh, so it was always my goal to kind of overcompensate that and, and make it right. And I really recommend as frustrating as this industry can be towards technicians, again, you're not going to be better off screaming at someone. You're only going to be yeah. worse off. So take that to heart and hopefully, yeah. hopefully that'll help. Remember that your customers are human beings and they don't understand. And sometimes you get comebacks that make no sense. Ever since you did my brakes, my horn doesn't work. And that's usually frustrating because we immediately go, oh, our stupid customers, yeah. these stupid people. They're, they're right? blaming me for fix, breaking right. their horn. That's dumb. But, but they don't know and right. it's not their fault. And you also have to remember that this industry has a reputation of taking advantage of customers. And so even when we're not taking advantage of them, customers feel like we are. And so they are coming into your shop like ready to fight already. And it's kind of on us to calm them down and let them know they're in a safe place and that we're going to take care of them. And that when we do make mistakes, because everybody does, that we're going to stand behind our warranty, yep. that we're going to take care of them, and that we're still the safe place to go. Be calm with them. And I think, too, remember that your customer might have something else going on in their life. I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody like yell at me or yell mm -hmm. at one of my employees and then the next day call back and say, I, you know what, I'm so sorry. I just found out that my kid got kicked out of school yep. and I was just so pissed and then my light came back on and I just lost it. Yep. And, and it wasn't your fault. It happens. <laughs> we, often, we often thought of ourselves as like car repair experts and like junior psychologists. <laughs> totally. You know, to, to help that. But again, you know, you said it to you. It, it, People have other stuff going on, so just try and be uh, uh, understanding of that and, and sh show some empathy, and I think that'll go a long way. You know, we can be this, ah, I'm, I'm the best, I don't make mistakes, but that's crap, and we all know it, and anybody that says that is lying. I like to say it's me and you against your car, not me against you. Oh, I you. like that. Right? I so like if we that. can get Damn on the it. same side Where were together. You like 10 years ago. <laughs> Use that. That's awesome. Right? If you take nothing away. <laughs> in fact, if you've not watched any of this video, like, you know, skipped ahead, you missed the golden, <laughs> the golden nugget. It's me and you versus your car. And that's really, wow, what an awesome way to say that. That's spot on. I love it. I'm mad that I didn't think of it, uh, but Ogie's way smarter than I am, so I'm not surprised. Guys, we are gonna wrap it up there, otherwise you're gonna get another 10 minutes of this. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, comments, or other legit good advice on working through these kind of comeback problems, please leave that down below. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll put links to all Bogey stuff. Check her out on social and on her up and coming awesome YouTube channel. Really turning the dials up there. With that, we're out. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. That was my elbow. Oh, okay. Hey guys, Humble Mechanic here. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> the dog doesn't like that. He doesn't like that one. Really what is going on in here? What are you doing? <laughs> are you talking to the to the to the crowd? Well, you know, I was hanging out in this seat and I was feeling all like powerful, it like the all and powerful Oz here. I have to let you in on a secret though, you're doing it wrong because I don't wear pants typically when I record these videos, but nobody really needed to know that. Anyway, 